Hi, what I have in front of me is the ISDT Q8 charger. The reason I'm making this video is to highlight some of the features that you might want to look out for while shopping for a charger. When you are looking through the product page, you see what the manufacturers want you to see. Things like max power is usually the main selling point or the current you can charge at. Well, don't get me wrong, those numbers are nice, but I don't think many of you will be fully utilizing that anyway. So while I unbox this ISDT Q8 charger that just arrived today, I'll walk you through some of the features that you might want to spot for while purchasing your next charger. Okay, so let's open up this thing. So it comes in the box like this. Uh, it's actually quite simple. You get a manual, which you will probably never use. You get some stickers, which I don't know, I don't like them. And you get a screen protector, which is nice. And you get the charger itself. Alright, let's get this out of the way. Alright, so the first thing you might notice is it's not that big. Yeah, it's not that big. There's a big fan in the back and the battery port and this is the input supply. And here's the USB mini, sorry, micro for updating the firmware. The screen is it's a, it's a touch, uh, sorry, it's not touch screen, but it's a touch sensitive buttons which might or might not work well. Well, that depends. Alright, so here we have the content of the box. First off, we have the manual, which we probably don't need. We have stickers, which we still don't need. And then we get a screen protector, which is nice. I, I don't remember which manufacturer charges come with a screen protector. And the unit itself. It can do 500 watts or 20 amps of charging. Note that I say OR. This is another thing that the manufacturers typically do not highlight out in the product page. What this spec means is that while charging, it will max out at either 500 watts or 20 amps, whichever comes first. For example, um, this particular charger, the ISDT Q8, is better at charging 6S than 4S. Why? Well, let's do some math. Let's try to understand power's law for a bit. So power is voltage times current. Given that, say if our limit is 10 watts to provide 5 volts, we can only draw 2 amps because 10 watts is 5 volts times 2 amps. So if we are, say, charging 4 S packs in parallel and this charges limit is 500 watts. So how much current can we draw? Let's see. So let's bring out the calculator. Five hundred watts divided by four S voltage, which is sixteen point eight, is twenty nine amps. But we are not going to get 29 amps as our current limit is only 20 amps. Then how much power can we theoretically max out if we are charging 4S then? Simple. Let's take 4S voltage, 16.8 volts, times 20 amps. 20 amps is the maximum that you can draw. This will only get us 336 watts. Well, don't get me wrong, assuming you are charging at 1C, which you should, you can already charge like 13, 15, 50 milliamp hour packs in one go. Uh, the one bit that bugs me is that 330 watts is still not 500 watts. You are not fully utilizing what this charger is capable of. Alright, so let's try 6S then. So 
five, again, 500 watts divided by 6S voltage, which is 25.2 volts, gets us 19 amps, 19.8 amps, which is very close to the advertised 20 amps. Well, you could still only charge 13, 15, 15 milliamp hour packs in one go, but at least you're not fully utilizing the 500 watts, which that is a win in my book. Now, the ISDT Q8 is actually capable of charging up to 8S. It's, well, it says so in the naming it's Q8. But let's do the math. 500 watts divided by 8S voltage 33.6 is 14.8 amps. Let's take 15 amps. So while this meant that you will be able to fully utilize the 500 watts, but you are still not using the full 20 amps like you could on success. And this is why the ISDT Q8 is actually a great charger for 6S, but not so good for 4S and 8S. But then, do note that some of the chargers require you to supply a high voltage to be able to hit the maximum output of power of all current. This is usually due to the input current limit of this charger and without going into too much details, it is always a good idea to supply higher voltage than the battery voltage of the battery you are charging at full charge. So for 6S, that will mean higher than 25.2 volts. So you, you will want to ideally supply something like 26 volts at least. One last thing I want to show you is that this is not the kind of charger you want to bring along if you care about bringing less stuff. So what do I mean by that? So this is my current charger before I bought the ISDT. It's the original Truekit RCM8, nice little charger that can do a lot of stuff but has accuracy problems. But I will still bring the Truekit RC out instead of the ISDT when I go out to fly and wants to fuel charge. Why? Um, let me show you this. I have no supply plugged in and when I plug in a battery it serves as a battery checker. But when I plug it into the ISDT not too clumsy well nothing happens so I don't like bringing a bunch of stuff out into the field so despite the accuracy issues I will still bring this one out the ISDT will stay at home as my main charger because only at home I have a supply that can provide 500 watts of power and it's not able to check my battery without supply plugged in Alright, so that's it for the video, hope this is useful for you guys and thanks for watching.